Slay the Spire is one of my favorite indie games in the last decade, and seeing its evolution from the early Axis version to what it is today has been really amazing. Uh, one of my favorite things about the game is all the fun references included by the devs, so I figured that I would make this video highlighting each one and also showcasing the origin from outside of Slay the Spire. Now, before we begin, I want to quickly define what a reference is in the context of this video, so I'm considering something a reference if it references a famous person, historical context, or a specific piece of media like a game, movie, work or writing, etc. So even though relics like Lizard Tail, Sozu, or Duvidal all reflect objects in real life, they won't be included. Additionally, I won't be covering references included in the beta art in this video, but I might make a follow-up video if people would be interested in that as well. Uh, it's entirely possible that I may have also missed some references when creating this video, so if you think there are any that were included, feel free to comment them below and I can pin them. And with all that being said, let's just jump into the relics first. Our first relic is Akabeko, which refers to a real-life story of a cow from the Aizu region of Japan. Uh, the red toys are based on a real cow used to build the Enzoji Temple of Yanaizu in the 9th century. Uh, I'm not sure where the in-game effect of 8 damage comes from, but it's still an interesting inclusion regardless. So Art of War references the book Art of War by Sun Tzu. Uh, Sun Tzu was a famous Chinese military general, and the Art of War was a book written by him detailing military strategy, tactics, uh, intelligence on the battlefield. So I think that the in-game effect of playing your skills and attacks strategically to gain energy reflects that pretty well. Uh, it's a really awesome reference, and I think it ties in well with the theme of the game. So the Centennial Puzzle is apparently a reference to the Millennium Puzzle from Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, according to the wiki, quote, Its main power grants the owner the powers and knowledge of darkness and shadows, giving him incredible skill at strategy and allowing him to use ancient and powerful magic, unquote. Uh, sounds pretty similar to what the characters of Slay the Spire do. So Happy Flower references the Sunflower from Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, in PvZ, the Sunflower is a plant that periodically gives you sun, which is like the main energy or currency you use to buy other plants. So the effect of gaining one energy every three turns in this game is a pretty good translation of that effect. So this one might be a bit of a stretch, but I think Pennib could be referencing the famous saying, the pen is mightier than the sword by English author Edward Bulwer Lytton, given that its effect has the extremely powerful one of doubling your attack damage every 10th attack. I think this might also be supported by the flavor text which portrays the pen as being really violent and deadly, similar to the saying comparing the pen to a sword, but then again, uh, this is mostly speculation. So apart from being the strongest relic in the game, the boot is visually referencing the Goomba Shoe power-up from Super Mario Bros. 3. Blue Candle is a reference to the Legend of Zelda item of the same name. Uh, in that game it wards off curses, just like how in this game it lets you exhaust your curses in battle. Meat on the Bone. This is possibly a reference to a popular meme from Danganronpa 2. Uh, in that game, there was like a mini game where you had to figure out the correct order for these four words, and a lot of people couldn't figure out that the answer was Meat on the Bone, since there is a bunch of other valid combinations. Question Card references the consumable item Question Card from the roguelike indie game The Binding of Isaac. Uh, it allows you to use your active item an additional time in that game, so I don't think there's too much similarity with the function in Slay the Spire, making it mostly a visual reference. The Courier. So I think this is a reference to the Courier from Dota 2, since they're both pets used by the shopkeepers to ferry items around, and uh, they both visually look pretty similar with the backpacks and everything, so yeah. So Toxic Egg is probably the most iconic reference in this game. Uh, it's pretty much just the face egg from Alien, which is a 1979 horror sci-fi movie directed by Ridley Scott. It's one of the most famous movies of all time, and I highly recommend it. And you can see here that the egg is based off of the egg that's seen on the movie poster. Bird-Faced Urn. So this one might be a bit of a stretch, but it could be referenced to the Egyptian goddess Serket, as the jar resembles the Egyptian canopic jars used in the ancient Egyptian burials. Uh, the bird-faced jar was meant to represent Serket, whose powers included magic and healing, similar to how the in-game effect heals you when you play your powers. So Dead Branch references the Dead Branch item from the 2002 MMO game Ragnarok Online. In the original game, it was used as a spell to summon creatures. Uh, I'm not sure if the card generation mechanic in Slay the Spire is based off of this ability, but it definitely could be, given how Debridge sort of summons cards for you when you exhaust them. Fossilized Helix references the Helix Fossil from Pokemon. Uh, it's an item given to the player that can later be used to revive the Pokemon Omanyte. And the Helix Fossil became a running joke in the Twitch Plays Pokemon event of 2014, where players would continuously select it and it eventually even became like a joke religion. Uh, I actually participated in this event and it's really cool to see that the devs made a callback to it, so yeah, cool reference. So Shovel is a visual reference to the shovel used by the main character in Shovel Knight, uh, which is a popular 2D indie platformer game. 
This one is really awesome. Unceasing Top is a reference to the 2010 movie Inception, where the characters are able to enter other people's dreams. Uh, in the movie, the main character uses a spinning top to tell whether he's in a dream or not, and if it doesn't stop spinning, then he's in the dream world, and if not, then he's in real life. Uh, the last scene in the movie really focuses on the top, but it cuts out at the last second, so it leaves the outcome a mystery, and it was a really famous scene. Uh, however, it's also kind of a second reference to the phrase top decking used in other card games like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Hearthstone, and, uh, where it usually means when a player happens to draw like a single card from the top of their deck that saves them or turns the tides of the battle, especially if they had no cards left in their hand. Uh, so the combination of these two references kind of creates the effect you see in Slay the Spire, where it allows you to infinitely draw cards, but also only if you have no cards left, so it kind of kind of combines the two meanings together, right? Uh, I definitely think the name and the design of this relic is super clever, and the fact that it can really define a deck on its own just makes it even cooler, so uh, it's probably my favorite reference in the game. Wing Boots. These are stated to reference the Boots of Travel from Dota 2, uh, where they serve as an upgrade to your teleport ability, similar to how this relic in-game allows you to move between paths you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Champion Belt is a reference to real-life fighting competitions like the UFC or wrestling competitions, where instead of trophies, they typically use these giant belts, and it looks very similar. So Charon's Ashes references the Charon in Greek mythology, who was the ferryman of the Styx and a god of the rebirth. So the effect when you exhaust cards and the flavor text is meant to be similar to the original mythos. Stone Calendar references the Mayan Long Count Calendar and the popular belief that it was a countdown to the end of human civilization or an apocalypse, with December 21st, 2012 being the Day of Reckoning. You can see that the effect of a countdown before doing massive damage to all enemies is meant to reflect its pop culture perception. The specimen is meant to be a direct reference to the main character Kaiman from the Japanese manga series Doro Hidoro, uh, with specific reference to an event leading to his decapitation and storage of his head in a jar. Goldeneye is probably another double reference, with the first being a reference to the 1995 James Bond movie Goldeneye, one of the most popular films in the series. Uh, Goldeneye also has a 1997 video game adaptation that was incredibly influential in the history of first-person shooter games as well as the speedrunning community. The second reference is likely another Yu-Gi-Oh reference to the Millennium Eye, where its power was the ability to see into the mind of your opponent. The power in Slay the Spire of scrying extra cards is somewhat similar where you get to peer into your own deck a bit further. Chemical X is a reference to the Powerpuff Girls, a TV show that first aired in 1998. It was the fourth element accidentally added to the mixture used to create the girls and is responsible for giving them their powers. It can be seen in the intro for each episode. Dolly's mirror refers to a sheep named Dolly, which was the first mammal clone from adult somatic cell. Uh, her cloning proved that an organism could be produced from a mature cell from a specific body part, and it was a big step in the field of stem cell research. Hand drill is a reference to the oversized drill from the 2007 anime Gurren Lagann, where it was used as a signature move of the protagonist in an attack called Giga Drill Break. You can see that the effect of breaking an enemy's block to apply vulnerable stems from this. Lee's waffle references Lee, who was a friend of the developers. He was known for having a waffle machine at work, and so they included this relic for fun. Orange pellets is a reference to the consumable pellet items from Dark Souls 3. In that game, they're used to boost your resistances towards different forms of damage. Prismatic Shard is a reference to the casual indie game Stardew Valley, where it's an incredibly rare item with a variety of uses, with its primary use being the ability to exchange it for a powerful weapon. It can also be gifted or sold for a lot of money, among a few other uses. Sling of Courage is a reference to the biblical story of David and Goliath, in where the weaker underdog David used a sling to throw a rock and defeat the giant Goliath. Uh, it's meant to be similar to how challenging the powerful elites in this game is an act of bravery coming from an underdog position. Brimstone is another reference to the Binding of Isaac, where it's a devil room item and it's often obtained through a deal with the devil at the cost of health. Thematically, it fits the item cloud really well because he also sold his soul for demonic power, and you can see the icon from the Binding of Isaac item in the art for the relic as well. Uh, it also works similarly in this game where you get a lot of strength at the cost of health since the enemies are also hitting you harder. Melange is a reference to the 1965 novel Dune by Frank Hebert, one of the most influential science fiction books with a variety of adaptations, uh, notably the recent Dune movie that came out last year in 2021. In the Dune universe, spice is like a really powerful drug only found on the desert planet of Arrakis and it expands the user's mental abilities and foresight into the future, similar to how the scry mechanic works in Slay the Spire. Blackstar references the song Blackstar off of the album of the same name released in 2015 by English musician David Bowie. Uh, Blackstar was his final album and he passed away two days after its release. Uh, today it's considered one of his best albums as well as one of the best rock albums of all time. Calling Bell is a reference to the Beckoning Bell from Bloodborne, 
Uh, it's an item in that game that you can use to summon other players for multiplayer co-op. Pandora's box is an artifact in Greek mythology connected with the myth of Pandora in the Greek poem Works and Days. Uh, Pandora's curiosity led her to open a container which released all of the curses upon mankind. Uh, it's cool because the relic in game releases a bunch of change and a variety of cards to your deck by replacing all your strikes and defense, so I think it fits pretty well. The Philosopher's Stone was a mythical stone in alchemy that had the ability to turn base metals into gold, granting the user massive wealth. It also granted the user the elixir of life, which could be used to gain health and immortality. So it's funny that in this game it gives the enemies more attack to kill you faster. A uh, notable pop culture usage of it in recent times was the inclusion in the first Harry Potter book, The Sorcerer's Stone. Wristblade is likely a reference to the Assassin's Creed series of games, where the characters often have a hidden blade on the wrist that they use for assassinations, which matches with the science theme of being an evasive rogue that uses daggers and poisons to assassinate enemies as well. The Inserter Relic is a reference to the famous indie game Factorio, where the player builds a giant factory with the purpose of leaving the planet. Uh, in Factorio, the Inserter is an essential item used to transfer items between different facilities and conveyor belts. Violet Lotus references the famous Black Lotus card from Magic the Gathering, in which it gives the player energy, much like Exiting Column grants two energy in this game. Golden Idol and the Event is a reference to the indie game series Spelunky, in which it's a very valuable resource that the player can collect and sell for a large amount of money. Uh, in the event to obtain it, you must also avoid like a giant boulder, which is a common trap around the Golden Idols in Spelunky. Uh, the Golden Idol and Boulder Trap in Spelunky actually references another scene in the 1981 movie Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the main character runs from a giant boulder after stealing a Golden Idol of his own. Anchoridian references the Anchoridian Book, which was a short manual of advice compiled of the teachings of Greek philosopher Epictetus, uh, but its appearance is a specific reference to the one from the cartoon TV show Adventure Time. Uh, in Adventure Time, the characters consult the Anchoridian for advice on upcoming challenges, so I think the effect of gaining a free power at the start of every battle is meant to emulate the preparation that it gives the readers. The Necronomicon is a reference to the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead franchise, a series of horror films and video games. This in turn references the Necronomicon from the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, in which it is an evil tome containing secrets that will drive humans to insanity just from reading it. Notary's Codex is a reference to Codex, an indie tabletop game made by the developer David Serlin. Uh, the name Notary's is meant to be similar to Serlin spelled backwards, and the gameplay effect of adding cards to your deck mid-battle reflects Codex gameplay of building your deck as the game continues. Fairy in a Bottle is a reference to the fairies from the famous Nintendo video game series, Legend of Zelda, where possessing fairies in your inventory automatically revives you when you run out of health. Fruit Juice is a reference to the life fruit items found in Terraria, and even have the exact same effect of giving the player an extra 5 max HP. Uh, I have a lot of hours in Terraria, and I never even noticed this reference until making this video, which is pretty funny given how direct the reference is. Ghost in a Jar. So this is speculative, but its naming could potentially be a reference to the famous anime Ghost in the Shell. Uh, that being said, it might just be an original design for a potion and a bit of a contrast to the fairy in a bottle potion. Die 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 is a reference to the character Reaper in Overwatch, where his ultimate ability deals massive AoE damage to all nearby enemies. Uh, the name of the card is based on his voice line during the ability, and the effect of the card matches the effect in Overwatch of dealing high AoE damage to all enemies in a quick burst. Die, die, die. Reach Heaven Through Violence is a reference to the webcomic Kill 6 Billion Demons, which began in 2013, uh, where the phrase Reach Heaven Through Violence is a commonly said proverb by the characters of the universe. Limit Break is a reference to the ability in the video game series Final Fantasy, uh, typically used as a powerful or signature move of the characters. The cards, artwork, name, and effect are all callbacks to the original power. I think Bane is a reference to the villain of the same name in the Batman universe. Uh, this is mostly supported by the artwork of the card being similar to Bane's glowing mask and eyes, and the effect of the card being based on poison, since Bane uses a drug called Venom to boost his power. Flying Knee is potentially a reference to the character Captain Falcon, specifically in the Super Smash Bros. series of video games. Uh, he has a move where he slams an enemy with his knee for really high damage and knockback, and it's one of the most well-known attacks in the series. Okay, so let's go through a bunch of cards that I think are references to Hearthstone, which is an extremely popular card game made by Blizzard based off of the universe and characters of the World of Warcraft games. 
Uh, Hearthstone is probably the most well-known game when it comes to the card game genre, and probably played a big part in influencing Slay the Spire, among other card games. Our first card is Backstab, which is a famous card used in many rogue decks. Uh, its effect of dealing 2 damage to an undamaged enemy is very similar to Slay the Spire card, as the innate keyword means you'll be playing it at the start of the battle when the enemies are full health, and both cards cost 0 energy or mana to use. Consecrate is another famous spell used in a lot of Paladin decks, and it does 2 AoE damage to all enemies. Discover was a mechanic introduced in the 2015 League of Explorers expansion. Uh, it functions pretty much the exact same way by allowing the player a choice of 3 random cards to choose from and add to their hand. Our last card is Blizzard. Now this may be a stretch, but Blizzard could be referenced since the name Blizzard itself is obviously the same name of the company that makes Hearthstone, uh, and the effect of the card is similar to the same card Blizzard in Hearthstone, where it deals AoE damage to all the enemy minions. Rip and Tear is a reference to the video game series Doom, where it was first used in a 1996 comic featuring Doomguy. Uh, since then it's become a pretty popular catchphrase in the community, and it's even included in some of the recent games. Hyper Beam is a reference to a move in Pokemon, where it does a high amount of damage in return for having to waste a turn to recover. Uh, the effect isn't quite the same for the defect, but the core idea of a powerful attack for a strong drawback is still preserved. Like Water is a reference to the motto Be Like Water of the famous martial artist and actor Bruce Lee, and that one should be formless like water, meaning that a person should not be stuck in a certain mindset and have the ability to adapt or change to different situations in order to grow. Uh, which is a great piece of advice for success in Slay the Spire, as you have to build your deck to adapt to the various enemies and challenges as you climb. Sands of Time is probably a reference to the 2003 video game Prince of Persia Sands of Time. The game was an incredible success, and it's considered to be one of the greatest video games of all time, and was one of the main inspirations behind the Assassin's Creed series of games. Flurry of Blows is likely a reference to the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons. In that game, the monk class has an ability called Flurry of Blows, which allows them to to perform additional unarmed attacks as bonus actions, uh, which is just like the effect of this card. Uh, additionally, the Watcher is a monk in the lore of Slay the Spire, so it fits really well. Bowling Bash is another reference to the game Ragnarok Online, where it was a skill used by the Knight class to deal AoE damage by striking a single enemy, which is somewhat similar to the card effect, as they both target a single enemy and they scale in effectiveness based on how many enemies there are. Panacea was a goddess of healing in Greek mythology, and the term Panacea has also come to mean a universal cure for any ailment. Uh, I thought that the card art might have been a reference to the Panacea potion from Dead Cells, but this card actually came out before the potion of Dead Cells came out, so I think it's just a coincidence. Evolve is a reference to Pokemon's Evolve mechanic, with the card art mirroring how many of Pokemon's evolution branches involve Pokemon getting larger and more powerful, uh, with either two or three stages usually. Second Wind's card art is most likely a reference to the game The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, as it's spot on with the famous art of Geralt on all the promotional material, especially with the silver hair and the armor. Spot Weakness might be a reference to the VAT system in the Fallout series of video games, where a player can enter a frozen or slowed down version of the game and target specific body parts of an enemy, allowing them to focus on different weak points. Bullet Time is a reference to the famous 1999 sci-fi movie The Matrix, specifically a scene where the main character Neo uses his power to stop a wave of incoming bullets. All for One is possibly a reference to the anime series Boku no Hero Academia, as All for One is the name of the main villain in that show, and the pose of the defect in the card art is very similar to the punches thrown by the character All Might. Lagavulin is a reference to the village of Lagavulin located in Isla, Scotland. Uh, there's a rather famous whiskey of the same name produced there by the local distillery as well. Gremlin Knob is apparently a reference to the Orc Knob from the Warhammer 40k universe. Uh, apart from being aggressive and dangerous warriors, I'm not sure what the other similarities are. Bronze Automaton's move Hyper Beam is another reference to Hyper Beam from Pokemon, uh, but this time it's pretty direct as it must spend a turn to recover after using it just like the Pokemon one. The Gremlin Mage's big attack comes with the voice line, Here It Comes, which could be a reference to the character Milhouse Manastorm from World of Warcraft and Hearthstone. Uh, in Hearthstone, he's infamous for being a really bad card and also having the really funny voice line of Here It Comes. Here it comes! Given that Gremlin Mage is also a very short magician and has a pretty similar funny sounding voice uh, when he delivers the line, I don't think it's too far of a stretch.
The face trader could be a reference to the Happy Mask trader NPC from The Legend of Zelda, uh, Majora's Mask. Visually they look pretty similar, and they also function somewhat similar through exchanging masks for gameplay effects. The character in the lost name could be a reference to Nazoth, one of the old gods in the Warcraft universe. Uh, notably, he was also included in the Hearthstone expansion Whispers of the Old Gods as one of the main legendaries for the Death Rattle archetype of decks, and he was a very powerful card. The Sensory Stone event is a reference to the 1999 cult classic RPG game Planescape Torment. Uh, in the Planescape universe, Sensory Stones are used to record moments in people's lives and allow others to experience them, which is exactly what you experience when interacting with this one in the Spire. Transmogrifier references a machine from the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, in the comic, Calvin invents a machine he calls the Transmogrifier, which is able to transform objects placed inside, uh, which is where the car transformation effect comes from. This one is super awesome and really in-depth, so the library event in Act 2 contains three separate references, each randomly chosen when you choose the option to pick a card. So starting with story 1, we have the description as follows. Uh, the story is about an insect-controlling teenage girl who aspires to become a hero. The book is filled with creative uses of powers, combat strategies, and varying perspectives. So this first story is the web serial Worm by John McRae. I've actually read this one and I highly recommend it, and I can leave a link to the website for, uh, for those interested in reading it as well. Uh, it's a really well-developed world and it subverts a lot of the traditional hero um, villain story elements and with a much more dark and morally gray universe. Um, and generally, there's a more realistic tone to how powers would be handled in the real world. So uh, yeah, highly recommend it and check it out. Story 2 says, The story is about a man who journeyed beyond the stars and found himself stuck on a desolate foreign planet. Ingenuity, luck, perseverance, and humor to retain his sanity were his tools to return home. So this second one is the 2011 sci-fi novel The Martian by Andy Weir. It's also a pretty famous book in recent times, and you may have seen the film adaptation that came out in 2015. So Story 3 says, The story takes place in a giant isolated building underground as the outside conditions have become unbearable. The novel is mired with conspiracies, propaganda, and injustice. You ponder if some similar dynamics are at play with Inspire. So this last one is the 2011 short story Wool by Hugh Hoey. Uh, I've actually never heard this one, but apparently it's part of a larger trilogy of books as the first in the series, and it sounds pretty interesting. The We Meet Again event features the character Ronwid. Uh, Ronwid is an anagram of Darwin, the famous evolutionary biologist most well known for his studies of the different bird evolutions across the Galapagos Islands. Uh, Ronwid is also a curious and knowledgeable researcher in the Spire, and many of the relics in the game also feature flavor text involving him in some way. The World of Goop event is meant to be a play on the title of the game World of Goo, and that's pretty much it. If you're wondering why this is a reference and not just a random coincidence or stretch, I'm including there's official references by the devs that I used to help make this video, and this is listed as one of them. The internal name for the Serpent event is Liar's Game, which is a reference to the 2005-2015 Japanese manga Liar's Game. Uh, the synopsis I found online for this manga is that a college student named Now mysteriously receives a large package of money, but is forced to enter the Liars game, where the players must cheat and steal from one another to succeed. The serpent event could also potentially be a reference to the biblical story of Adam and Eve, where a serpent tempts Eve into eating a forbidden fruit, but this could just be a coincidence. Uh, finally, it also kind of reminds me of the primordial serpents from Dark Souls like King Seeker Framt, uh, as they're both big snakes that come out of a hole in the ground, but you know, who knows. The Council of Ghosts is probably a reference to the 2001 animated film Spirited Away. In that movie, there's a character called No-Face, who is a ghost with a black body and white mask that looks exactly like these ghosts, especially the one with the mouth at a certain point in the movie. Uh, Spirited Away is widely considered one of the best animated movies of all time, and it's one of my favorite movies, so I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Uh, generally, everything by Studio Ghibli is really good, so go check them out. The Moe Head event is actually another double reference. The first is a continuation of the Spelunky reference, as there's a Moai head structure in Spelunky that the explorer can enter, and the requirement of the Golden Idol is a continuation of the previous Spelunky event. Uh, the second is probably a reference to the 1992 animated Disney movie Aladdin. The Moai head looks exactly like the Cave of Wonders that Aladdin jumps into, and the cave itself contains a large amount of gold and treasure. The pose that you see the ironclad in is identical and probably a dark reference to the character Hakuman from Blas Blue, a fighting game series. The Merchant's Line Stay a While and Listen is a reference to the character Deckard Kane from the game series Diablo, also made by Blizzard, where it's a famous line he uses since he plays the role of a mentor that gives the player advice. The Void Essence Blight that you can obtain in Endless Mode is the Void Essence dropped by some of the monsters in Stardew Valley. And that's everything I was able to find. 
like I said at the start, if you think there are any I may have missed or would like to see more of this type of video, uh, maybe going through some of the beta art, feel free to comment below. I hope you enjoyed learning about many of the references in this game. Uh, it was a lot of fun to see the original sources that influenced the developers, especially some of the more obscure ones. Uh, this video took a lot of time to put together, so if you enjoyed it, please leave a like or subscribe to let me know if I should explore some more of this style of content. And finally, thanks for watching.